The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's more as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening and welcome back. This is Lowe's Moore. Welcome back to The Blueprint Podcast. Um, and man, doesn't that look nice behind me? Man, I'm looking good. Woo. I, I, I tell you what, um, you know, man, I've had a wonderful summer. Uh, you know, it's interesting to see, man, how beautiful summer was and opportunity to spend it with family and, and, and friends uh, all summer long, man. And so you, it was crazy thing is that you hate the, you love to see summer come in, and, but you hate to see it go. Um, and of course I've had a wonderful, particularly, uh, a wonderful August, you know, wonderful August, it, you know, almost even though I was my wife and I, and all of us have, you know, when you go out and go on trips and stuff like that, you mask up and, and, uh, you know, you, you just wanted to take that risk and get out there. And, um, cause we celebrated in, in August, we celebrated our 39th wedding anniversary, man. And, uh, we had about four or five days where we just, chilled out in Pennsylvania and the Poconos. And it was just, it was just a terrific time. Um, we had a, you know, got back home, had a little break for a little while for, for about a week or so. And then as you probably know, if you've been watching us on, you know, on the podcast or on, um, on Facebook that of course we went a family trip with a few of the family members, uh, you know, uh, my oldest daughter, Michelle and, and her husband, Dakari, and um, our son, and our grandkids, and we had a wonderful. Oh man, what 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 an amazing time in uh, Cancun, Mexico! It, it was just awesome, it was just an awesome experience. And you know, coming back home, and then you know, coming down to the end of summer, you know, we winding down from the end of summer. You know, I did a few golf outings and different things like that, and getting ready. What are we getting ready for? We're getting ready for Labor Day. Ha, Labor Day. You know, I did my nice Labor Day special last week. Um, I want to give a shout out uh, to, I want to give a shout out to my man, uh, Steve Bender, um, who had his showcase today. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it. I was supposed to be there uh, this morning. Uh, and I was looking forward to it. You know, going out there, seeing some uh, some potential players and and a bunch of coaches uh, that would have been out there. Um, but you know, right after Labor Day, um, spending some time with the family. You know, uh, my wife did a marvelous job on Labor Day. I mean, I'm sure she was a little upset with me and stuff like that because she did all the cooking, she did all the working. She's giving the EY, but you know, I loved it anyway and to try to help clean up at the end. And, uh, you know, it was just good having family over, you know, grandkids and different things like that. And, man, you know, dropped my mom off uh, to the house and was coming back home. Man, I was like, hey, man, my throat is a little itchy here. You know, a little, what's that? What's that like? And I get back home and something I usually never do is like come back home. I usually I have to wind down. I don't know about you guys, but I have to wind down, you know, before I can go upstairs and get into bed. If I go up early, I mean, I can't go to sleep. I'll be up all night. But if I wind down and kind of start nodding and and then go up to the, uh, you know, then go upstairs and go to bed, I'll go to sleep, you know. But this time I went up early, man. <laughs> I went up early. My wife was up there and we're sitting there. And, man, all of a sudden we started coughing and, you know, whatever. All night long we were just just going going crazy. Um you know, she gets up on on Tuesday. She had a project, you know, upstate. And, you know, I wake up, you know, like I normally do, you know, try to straight up around, straighten up around the house. And then, man, so I let me go for a walk. I go for a walk. I come back, you know, get myself together. And later on that e early evening, I said, man, I need to test. 
So <laughs> I go upstairs, get the test kit, you know, because you, you can find anything on YouTube, put the little test kit kit name in there. And, um, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I started testing and stuff like that. And man, when I poured those three drops in there, man, that first line got bright dark. I mean, I mean, like, I was like, wow, I tested positive after like two years, you know, it's like two years from running, running, trying to keep from, you know, getting COVID. Right. I, I end up testing positive. I call my wife. She picks up the phone. She's like, you positive, aren't you? I was like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm positive. Me too. You know, and then she said, look, hey, I'm up here. You know, you might as well come up here with me. So we've been in quarantine since Tuesday. Yeah, we've been in quarantine since uh, 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 Tuesday, man. Um, you know, getting better every every single day. Um, but like, man, I don't think in a million years I thought we was we was just trying to avoid uh, testing positive, getting COVID. Just you know, and here we are. But hey, you know, we're in this thing together, so. I think that, you know, when we got married, said uh, to death, do us part. Right. Uh, so we 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 have been up here. We didn't want any of our family members uh, to be affected by it. Uh, so uh, we've been just quarantined up here, man. It's, it's been it's it's been good to go through it together together and um, to encourage e each other and uh, and different things like that. So uh, um, but we, we we're doing well. Right. We're doing well. And, uh, and hopefully in a few days, man, we'll we'll be out and moving around again. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, you know, let's get rolling uh, before I get started tonight. Um, you know, I want to, you know, never forget 9-11. Uh, right. 9-11. Uh, my wife was speaking and I remember she was going to speak in. Atlantic City. And I was waiting for her to get ready. We were sitting downstairs. I'm looking at the television downstairs. She's looking at the television upstairs. And uh, she was telling me to turn to the news. And as I turned to the news, that's when I seen the second plane go into the the into the into the uh, to Twin Towers in the second tower. Um, just just in a horrific day. I mean, uh, we, I, I was just thinking like it was something out of, uh, like it was a movie, right. And that it wasn't real. And, uh, you know, then, then, you know, after you see it happening on, on, on television, uh, you start to think about loved ones. Um, and immediately, uh, my, my, my sister, my youngest sister, Tracy, who worked down in the city, I, I immediately thought about, thought about her. And, you know, being down in the city and all things that was going on down, down, down there in, in uh, New York City. And we tried to get in contact with her and, you know, eventually we did. And but it it was uh, it, it was the craziest time ever. We could never forget. We, we never wanted it to happen again. And we could never forget that so many people were lost that day. Um, and we could never forget not only those who were lost that day, I mean, but those who survived. And, um, you know, those heroes, you know, those individuals, uh, you know, we say in the church, we thought it not robbery. Well, they thought it not robbery to get to to go to it. You know, people are running away from it. But but there were heroes running to it to see how many people they can and say they could save. And, and, and the firemen and the policemen that were there and the DPW um, that that went down there that day to see if they could be supportive and and so um you know i want to say uh salute my my good friend uh sydney martin right who uh was down there at 9 11. um you know sydney's doing well uh so i want to you know pay you know salute him you know today for being a hero down there at 9 11 man just 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 awesome man and um he's his, his lovely wife, Pastor Martin, um, but uh, just wanted to remember. And then uh, you, 
I was just thinking in my mind that I know anybody. And when I got the news that uh, when I was coaching at Albany State University, um, I had a player, Steve Vincent uh, Mulberry, uh, and just a great guy, man. Handsome, you know, uh, uh, charming, charismatic, uh, just Steve, just the nicest guy in the world, man. I mean, every day he used to come in, coach. You got any news for me? <laughs> you know, and he had that, you know, that kind of look and that swagger. He had a little swagger to his game and stuff like that, man. He had the long curly hair. And, um, you know, Steve uh, lost his life, you know, uh, during 9 11. I pay tribute to him, you know, every year, man, because I just thought, man, Steve was just going to be awesome, man. Uh, just an awesome person. And, Wherever he would work or wherever he would play, man, he would just be a blessing. So um, if we could just take a moment of silence for for 9-11 um, this evening, we want to remember and we want to never forget uh, the tragedy of 9-11. So take a moment of silence. All right. Uh, yeah. So, you know, let's get rolling tonight. Um, I'm st I'm still in quarantine. I guess I get I guess I'm out. <laughs> I may be out of quarantine, but but uh, yeah, I'm still in quarantine here. And but let's let's jump right into it. I, I don't have my I don't have my pebble in the pond, but, you know, imaginary. I'm just dropping a pebble in the pond here and that. Like I say, each and every week, I'm expecting a ripple effect of the show. Um, each guest has been tr truly a blessing uh, to me. Uh, I thank you for all the comments that you guys give me uh, in return uh, for for the interviews and the people that we get to meet on the Blueprint each and every week. So, uh, again, thank you guys. Um, and again, I'm I'm excited to be back this next this week and. Hey, let's jump right into it, man. I got my book of the week, right? I may have had this one on here before, but, uh, you know, this is this is a good book because we're living in a time where, you know, uh, we say in the church, right, that sometimes the, there are three ways the enemy attacks you, right? You know, he, he attacks you. If you can't get your mind he tries to get your body. If you can't get your body, he tries to get your family. Right. But we seem to be, uh, you know, being attacked in our mind. Right. And, and, and so the things we see and the things we listen to every single day and things we see on the news, man, uh, can help us. Well, not it really don't really help us, but it could put us in place or a frequency or sound or vibration uh, called fear. Right. And Dr. Joe Dispenza. Right. He has this book out called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, you know, how to lose your mind and create a new one. Right. And um, I found this book to be very extremely interesting, uh, interesting and impactful. I mean, I've had the chance to read it. Um, I had the chance to listen to it. And I, I think that if you if you, you know, just like every day we got to eat. And we got to exercise to stay strong physically. And every day we got to get up and we got to read our scriptures and we got to pray and we got to worship to strengthen our spirit. Right. We also have to feed our minds. So uh, that's why, you know, every every week I give I give a book of the week. And, um, and and so this will help you build and strengthen your mind, just like you want your mind and body and spirit to grow every single day, every single day you want your mind to grow. So this is the my book of the week, Breaking the Habits of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And then my word of the week is life, right? I mean, you know, with all the stuff that's going on, and as I just mentioned, man, we can spend our life, we can spend our time uh, talking about fear, we can spend our time talking about dying. You know, I, ever since I was a little kid in the, in, in the church, most people would say, hey, man, when we get to heaven, man, soon, you know, you know, Jesus is coming back soon and, you know, we, we're going to go to heaven. Right. And we can spend more time talking about death and thinking about death than we think about life. 
you know, and every day I wake up, I think about life. This is just a powerful word. It's something powerful. Every time you take a deep breath, you're talking about the breath of life. Right. And so I like to concentrate on that. My life, my breath is spirit and my breath is life. Right. And if I can ever breathe. Right. If I can find myself in fear or anxiety, one of the things when I play basketball, right, I always had a trigger word. Whenever I started to get stressed or started panic or get in a state of fear, right? I used to think about my key word for me to calm down was smooth. I used to think about something smooth, like water moving smoothly, or that when I was playing basketball, I was moving smoothly. I started thinking about smooth and it would help me relax. Right. And and so that's my key word when it when it comes to stress and 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 and, and anxiety and different things like that. I think about smooth, relaxed, peaceful, right? I think about life. I don't think about death, right? I mean, every every day that I woke up this morning and turned on the television, man, there was some medicine for all kinds of stuff. You're about to have a heart attack. You've got cancer. you got all kinds of things. And so every day, man, things are being pushed in your mind to think about death. But I say you should wake up every day and start thinking about life. Right. Um, you know, and one of my favorite scriptures is I, I come that you might have this. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. Right. So I think about abundance. Right. I think about thriving. Right. Rather than just sustaining. So that's my word of the week. Life. I say so I say to each and every one of you think about life tonight. Right. So. And then my affirmation for this week, the Hill and Pierce Harper affirmation quote moment, manifest manifestation is real. Uh, start speaking positively into your life. Change the way you think. Change the way you speak. Right. So uh, that's my affirmation for this week. And then here's my music. Right. Uh, Dietrich Hatton, I think a couple of weeks ago, I had the movie on Blessed and Cursed. But Dietrich Hatton, he's able. Man, I, I was I was watching the movie and listening to that song, man. I love that song. He's able. You know, God is able to do, man, all that we can imagine in our mind. God is able. Right. And I, I love that song. If you don't have that song, get it right. If you don't have that song, make sure you get that song. He's able. And then my movie of the week, right, is Dream On. Now, most of us, when you think about 1996, we could think about the Dream Team. We could think about Magic Johnson, uh, you know, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. We could think about the, the Dream Team. But somewhere along the line, the women in 96 got lost, right? But there's a new documentary I'll call, called Dream On. Man, them them women of 1996 had a dream team too, right? And they and they do an excellent uh, story and documentary on these women and what they had to go through in order to put this team together and so that they could go on and win, right? I meant the men were great, but the men the women were great too, right? And we can't forget them. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's my music, music and movie of the week and then ah I, I i think we just gotta throw up what's next and let me just hit it yeah man it's been a lot of retirement had the opportunity uh over the weekend last weekend um to to go to uh pennsylvania eastern pennsylvania and my cousins uh merle penelope and daphne they all retired we went to their retirement party last week man I, we had a great time I, i've seen so many cousins i hadn't seen in so and in, in so long man it was just beautiful to be out there had the opportunity to take my, my wife and my mom and we were out there man and just just hanging out seeing my nieces cousins man I, and i was saying to them last week man we ought to do this more often we ought to spend more time with family more often so uh Again, retirement. Uh, congratulations. Enjoy it. Right. And then uh, we have some other retirement retirements here. Man, some legends, Sylvia Fowles. Um, we got um, Sue Bird, Serena, 
and Felix. Alex and Felix. I mean, man, this is a crazy year, man. 2022. Look at these legends. Legends, women who were just amazing. You know, I used to just stop and watch them, right? Because they would just perform at the highest level. So I wanted to salute them, man. I mean, because just watching them just bring such joy, uh, you know, to see. I mean, Alex and Felix, man, I mean, she... You know, when Nike didn't want to sign her to, you know, back to a contract, she started her own shoe company, you know. And I mean, we know what Serena's doing, right? I mean, it was just a pleasure with Sylvia Fowles and 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 um Sue Bird. Man, I remember Sue Bird all the way back in college, man, when she was a legend at, at UConn. And now, man, time's flying, man. Now she's retired. And and so I just wanted to salute the women. Uh, this evening uh, on job well done, enjoy retirement, and uh, may God bless you. And then, um, yeah, my I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but my wife, uh, my wife and some friends, you know, and her sister, um, and they started, uh, it was a WABA. My wife is the owner of one of the franchises here in Mount Vernon, New York, called the Shamrock. I mean, they won. They won. They won this evening, um, which puts them in the in the finals next week, and they're in the final four next week. On, uh, you know, not next week. huh? Not next week. Not next week. Not the next following week. week, the week, the weekend of the 29th to uh, September 29th and October the second, and Greensboro, North Carolina. Man, they in the they they in the final four. Um, trying to seek their first championship. So I want to say give a good shout out to them and congratulations. Man, and I'm looking forward to next week um, because we're going to have Coach Munch on next week and we're going to talk about the team and we're going to talk about how he built this, you know, how he built this team up and, you know, and just talk about his love for and passion for for coaching, coaching women and talk about this whole WABA uh league and so i'm looking forward to that on on uh next week and then my good friend and my teammate uh back in the day coach bobby huggins from west virginia university congratulations coach on making it to the basketball hall of fame man uh man awesome awesome man i mean you know so coach bobby huggins in the basketball hall of fame so and so without further ado right without further ado i got a little video here and i'm introduce my guests and we're just gonna get rolling we're gonna have a good time yeah like this is it's every day i have to you know kick down the doors and let people know i'm here um so i would say i i tend to remind myself that i am worthy and what I have to offer this world is amazing and phenomenal and only I can offer it. And so if I make myself smaller, then the world misses out on all of my awesomeness. And then I miss out on opportunities to connect with others who did not get to connect with my authentic self, right? So, because what we realize is as we let out more authenticity, we attract more authenticity, right? So we start to develop some and deepen some of our relationships. So I would say that I really just have to remind myself that it's I'm worth it. It's worth it. You know, the investment, the fear, the anxiety, it's all worth it in the end, depending on, you know, kind of how you want to live your life, your existence. If you want to engage with others that are authentic, then you've got to be willing to be vulnerable as well. Wow. Dr. Kiba Rogers. Hello. Man, welcome. And, and you know, you I had an opportunity to look at a bunch of the clips. Mm -hmm. But but that was the one. <laughs> you know, you, you start talking about your awesomeness. You know, <laughs> nobody would get this awesomeness. And you know, <laughs> listen, listen, this is only facts. It's only facts. I'm just saying. No, I, no, I thought I thought it was powerful. Because hey, you, Dr. You, Kaysen, look, Dr. Kaysen is co-signing for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Dog. well welcome everybody um <laughs> yeah i just thought that clip out of all the clips you know mm -hmm, listening to mm -hmm. the clips and stuff like that that man it spoke 
it spoke volumes to, you know, now just for you, you were speaking, you were saying it for you, but kind of you, 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 you were encouraging all of us, man, Absolutely. that we all have some, we all have something to offer, Absolutely. right? We all have our different gifts and, and things like that. And, and I was like, wow, I, I like that right there. And that's, yeah. that's what we need to start on. <laughs> so. Yes, definitely. And I, and I was, I can think that clip is me responding to how to encourage others to show up more as their authentic self. So I think that's how I got into that portion of the conversation, because sometimes we, we forget, we allow the narrative that others have about us to be foremost in our minds, instead of recognizing and taking action on the fact that we get to create our narrative. You know, I, I create my narrative. I tell the world who I am. I do not accept the world's notions about who I am. Right. So if that is true, then allow me to show up and show you who I am. And you either accept that or you don't. And either way, I'm just fine. Wow. Yeah. Well, let, I, you know, I, I mean, started. How about a curiosity conversation about, you know, your authentic self? Because mm -hmm. I, I think that a lot of people. Right. And I'm glad you, you, you know, that's what I liked about the clip, mm -hmm. um, because when you know, when you meet somebody, right, are you are you honestly meeting the authentic person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, because, you know, I've been around kids and people all the time and it and, and you know, it's it's like everybody's wearing a mask. So, you know, and, and so I'm thinking they one way. Right. And so how hard it is it for a person with all the stuff that's going on and all the mess that we hear and see every single day? How hard is it for a person to really find their authentic self? Extraordinarily difficult. It's really, really hard. Um, I would say that a lot of it has to do with uh, fear and shame. Shame is the thief of joy, right? So if we can, you know, believe that something about who we are is so um, horrible and unworthy, then we will try our best to hide that aspect of who we are. So we show up in the world essentially creating a bubble around that part of ourselves so that no one will ever know. And in the meantime, we're creating and morphing into someone else in order to keep that lie going. So it's really difficult to be your authentic self. And the first, the first thing about it is you've got to accept who you are. You've got to say, yeah, I've made some mistakes. Yeah, my life wasn't always so peachy. Yeah, I've made decisions that are questionable. And then realize like, yep, we all have. And we're all still worthy. You know, and the people who are for you will appreciate that you show up as your authentic self. Now, let me be clear. There are some people who ain't for me <laughs> and they don't appreciate that I show up as my authentic self. So... <laughs> So, you know, that, that presents some challenges um, <laughs> and that's why I got to kick down doors every day because I'm like, yep, and I'm still here showing up as the authentic me that I am. Speaking of, shout out to Mount Vernon. Just got to do that, <laughs> especially third and third. Um, and I got to say it like that. So the people who know, know because um, that's where I'm from. So speaking of authentic selves, I grew up on 3rd Avenue and 3rd Street in Mount Vernon. And those who know, understand what that means. And so um, I, I am still that person that I was then, uh, more mature, more educated in other spaces, but I still show up as my authentic, loving, caring, assertive, powerful self, as I was when I was just knee high to a grasshopper. Awesome, man. Well, let me just shout out. Hey, I'm gonna shout out to Mount Vernon too. 70 West Third <laughs> Street. <laughs> out of the projects. <laughs> you know, I remember some somebody saying to me one time, um, you know, does any any anything good come out the projects? Mm. Mm. Right. And uh, you know, when I when I was a little kid, where do you live at? I, I live in 70 West 3rd Street in the projects. Did anything good come out the projects? Well, we prove a whole lot of people wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's mm -hmm. a Absolutely. lot of... <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And the, the thing is, though, the, the, 
so think about that narrative though, right? So that that person's narrative was setting you up for the belief that the answer is no, right? That you are not worthy just because of where you were raised, right? And there mm -hmm. are many people who believe that, who who begin to internalize those kinds of things about themselves because of where they come from. And the reality is, of course, many great things not only come out of the projects, but hello, are still in the projects. Let's <laughs> stop right. acting like all the greatness has left. People's circumstances and situations are different, but they're still awesome. Oh, yeah. And I, I remember, uh, Le was it Les Brown who said, it's not how you start, but it's how you finish. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 uh, yeah, a lot of people on Third and Third and Seventy West Third Street and in Mount Vernon, where they are now, may not be where they end up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, so um, yeah, that's powerful. So, you know, since you you hit Third and Third, right? <laughs> one of, one of the things I like, uh, you know, three focuses I like to have okay. on the show and and getting to know and getting to know people is the importance of family. Right. The importance mm -hmm. of faith and knowing that you're a doctor, the importance of education. So mm -hmm. if you can can take us back and and talk okay. about family and growing up and, and, and that whole experience. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I grew up with my mom, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, um, my aunt and uncle and my brothers. I am one of five children. And oh, look at that. And I'm my mother's only daughter. And uh, I have her face, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes. just, I just stole that on the way out. Um, <laughs> so um, grew up there. Um, you know, my grandmother, God rest her soul, was, um, I've, I've now since understood this. Of course, I didn't understand this as a child, but she really raised us to be ourselves and to take up space, right? If you don't like something, you can say it. Um, as long as you're respectful, it didn't mean that, you know, the consequences would change, but you can <laughs> express what your <laughs> dilemmas are and, you know, and be able to, you know, negotiate and navigate in a way that felt real and true to who you were. Um, so I really appreciated that. I would say my mom, my mother, you know, my mother is watching now. I saw she just commented something. My mother is <laughs> an absolute warrior, right? But here's the thing. The world would have you believe that someone like my mother is not worthy because my mm. mother b battled with addiction for a few uh, years in her life when I was a child and as I grew up and you know, when I look at her, I think whatever problems I think I have, I, no, they they pale in comparison to someone who had to start over, start her life over, get her kids back, you know, and reinvent herself, recreate herself as a human being while people all the while are telling her she's not worthy. Look at that. That's all my siblings all my, on my mom's <laughs> side. That's all my siblings and my nephews, my niece. Um, so... Love my family. I would say my older brother, um, everybody knows him as Glory, but I'm going to go ahead and shout out his government. It's DeVell. <laughs> um, he was my first teacher. You know, DeVell used to come home from school and teach me everything he learned. So I I will, um, I would go to school. I knew how to write my name. I, I knew how to identify letters, you know, all of these things because I was playing school for years. <laughs> <laughs> because he would come home and teach me everything he knew. Um, also, he taught me all the things that all the other kids knew, and he felt like I should know. So my brother mm. taught me how to jump double dutch. He said, you okay. have to learn how to do this. All the little girls know how to do this. He taught me how to jump double dutch. Taught me how to braid hair. He's braiding on the dolls. <laughs> you got to know how to do this, right? So this is the type of environment I grew up in. So even with there was some chaos there, but I had a magnificent childhood. I never, never doubted that I was completely and utterly loved, even in the midst of the chaos. And I was allowed to show up as myself. I didn't have to fight to, to get people to see my value. They understood my value and they understood my weaknesses. One of my biz biggest weaknesses as a child, I mean, maybe still now, maybe, um, <laughs> is that, you know, I 
was um, not very good with my sense of direction. And, you know, my grandmother would just say stuff like, you know, she was just bold. Right. So she would say, you know, <laughs> we're going we're about to go out. She tells my brother, hold your sister's hand because, you know, if you drop her at the corner, she ain't going to be able to find, find her way home. <laughs> and I, you know, I looked at her, my feelings were hurt, but I certainly did reach my hand out. Like, you know, she right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but this is the type of environment that I grew up in, right? The, your, your strengths are your strengths. I mean, she was always, you know, encouraging me because I was very good at school, but also your weaknesses are your weaknesses, right? So that's what I would say about my family. Um, we're still very close. We still, you know, everybody is, goes through the things that they go through because they momentarily forget their awesomeness, but they come back to it eventually. At least that's the prayer it's leading into faith. I grew up into in a Baptist church, black Baptist church. Um, I was in the choir and, um, oh. you know, we went to church every Sunday and, you know, church was long back then. I mean, you know, <laughs> church was, long. church was Sunday it was, it was all of Sunday. Like, what did you do on Sunday? I went to a church. That's what I did on Sunday. I went in the morning for Bible school. Then we went to the service and then we had the food afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, whatever other meetings was, I don't know what was happening, but we were in church all <laughs> Sunday, all Sunday, you know? Right. By the time I got home, I got to run in my stockings. I don't know. My <laughs> shoes are buffed. I, I, I don't know what happened, but it was a full day of activity at the church. Um, but ultimately, I would say, you know, God really guides me and my decision making. Um, of course, I eventually gave my life over for myself. Um, exactly. But <laughs> Sunday morning and evening. Um, so I eventually gave my life over to the Lord myself. This wasn't until I was, uh, at least at my recollection, until I was in college. And I got to say, you know, there's no way I would be here <laughs> without mm. God. No way. No way I would be here. And that has nothing to do with the, the accolades and achievements. It has to do with life. I would not be here if God was not protecting and ordering my steps. Um, mm. And then in terms of education, I was one of those people who, you know, I always loved to learn. I still love to mm. learn. Uh, I went to school and school was rather easy for me. Um, thankfully, I, I realized as an adult, as I started learning more about psychology, how much that helped uh, with mm. a lot of the things that, you know, kind of didn't touch me um, because I loved learning. So I was a product of, you know, the tracking system, which everyone, you know, we all know what the negative aspects of that, mm -hmm. of that is. Uh, but I would say I definitely benefited. It was a privilege for me. Um, I was an honor since first grade. And um, because of that, there were expectations uh, laid upon me. People didn't allow me to half do my work you know they wanted me to do my best um back when i was in elementary school we had a recess and you know i was the class tutor i'm, <laughs> I'm helping everybody I, you need to get this done because we got this double dutch game about to go down <laughs> and you eating into our time why are you not done <laughs> what you don't understand <laughs> I already told them, Glory, you done missed it. You done missed it. You missed your moment of fame. Um, <laughs> I see my brother. Oh uh, no, writing. He, he, yeah, he's he, he's all he's, he's already uh, he's already been on. He done texted me three times already. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, so you know, I was one of those people. So for me, school truly was like I would learn things, which was exciting, and I would play with my friends. I mean, I you know that was my experience of school. Like. I was learning and I was playing with friends. So I went to school every day, like, yes, let's get it. What are we doing today? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. so, um, you know, we, it was expected that I would continue to do well. Um, sometimes my brother and I would stay up late and, you know, I had this laugh. I still have this laugh that, you know, used to get us in trouble because then that's everybody knew we were still up. And um, I, I love the laugh, by the way. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and um, you know, so, you know, my my grandmother would say, if you don't go to bed, I will not wake you up for school. That was a punishment for me. Like, mm. I will not wake you up for school if you don't go to bed on time. I'm like, wow. oh, I got to go to bed because I want her to wake I, me I up. I've been like, school. OK, well, I'm not, I'm not going to bed. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd be like, I'm not going. To, oh, I, that's all. <laughs> right. And that to me was like, it's like you cursing at me. Like, why you gotta be so? Why you gotta be so mean? I mean, I was just having a little laugh. I'm about to go to bed now. <laughs> but like, you know. <laughs> oh man. So um. So yeah. So it it was always really important. And then as I as I you know kind of moved up, I went to college. Um. There was a lot going on with my family at the time, and. It was a really, really difficult time for me, and I did not do well my first year of college. Um, my first year of college, my grades were, whew, I, I want to say I the end of my first year. So first of all, let me say, before I tell you what my GPA was at the end of first year, <laughs> I was the valedictorian of my high school class. So keep that okay. in context. All right, all right. Okay. End of first year, I had three jobs, three boyfriends. <laughs> I was traveling black and forth to visit with my brothers uh, every other weekend and taking classes. The end of the first year, I had a 1.6 GPA. 1.6. So, you know, I got that phone call in the summer where mm. they say, you're not cutting it, right? We we going to give you one more, one more semester, right? Not even a year, one more semester. I'm gonna give you mm. one more semester. If you can't get your GPA above a 2.0 in this one semester, we're gonna have to say goodbye to you. I almost lost my mind. I said, mm. "Oh, this is serious." Like, what? What? <laughs> what happened? I don't even know what happened. <laughs> like, so, of course, from that point forward, I went to school and I was getting three sixes and three eights and four point oh's because I was like, "Oh, I, I does this. I know how to do this." Okay. Right. I was I was acting funny. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I forgot for a second, but I'm back. You know. So <laughs> yeah. so I you know I graduated with like a three point four you know cum laude which. You know, one with oh, three Aria says she got me beat 1.4. Listen, girl, <laughs> listen. But that doctor is still that doctor, though. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> so, um, so I went, you know, I did that. Here's what's interesting I went to um, finish my degree and then I stayed on for my master's. And I wanted to get my doctorate, but I needed to take a break. So I took a break. I worked for a few years, went back for my doctorate. What's interesting is I had this high school chemistry teacher, Dr. Marvin Jennings. He was a chemistry teacher, but he was on the side a podiatrist. So he was a, a MD. And um, he called all of his students by our last name and he called us doctor. So from about 10th grade, I was being called Dr. Rogers. Okay. I didn't even understand what was happening. Right. But he was planting the seed that I am a doctor, that I'm capable of being a doctor. So when I thought about going to get my doctorate, this all came back to mind. I went to see him. He was still working at the same school. And I said, I didn't even see it when we were in high school. But you were setting the stage for me to believe that I can do whatever I wanted to do. Right. And so fast forward, of course, I got my doctorate. And um, you know, doc doctorates just, just, yes, that's my doctorate graduation. Um, <laughs> doctorates are not for the faint of heart. Let me just, just go ahead and put that out there. That's, it was, it was a lot and it's not even about the academics. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's all the steps and the hoops and the, you know, all the things that need to happen. Um, but so education was always really important. Even now, you know, just recently, uh, during the right before the pandemic, I was taking this one year postgraduate certification um, so that I can become a diplomat for the American Board of School Neuropsychology. And it was 20, mm -hmm. it was one week in a month for 22 hours. Um, so it was like from Friday night from three to 10, Saturday nine to five, Sunday nine to five for one week in a month for a year. And then, um, you know, COVID shut us down and we still had to finish up in order to get this um, certification. And, you know, I did that because I was really interested in and am really interested in understanding how the brain works and how I can then bring that to my community and help children understand their learning style. Yes, cousin Evelyn was at the graduation. She was the first one there. She wasn't playing no games. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I, Evelyn, I want to say happy birthday to her. She turned eighty. Yes, eighty years young. Big eight zero, looking <laughs> looking like she's fifty five. 
<laughs> yeah, and then we got Elder Ingram who turned 82 as well. Wow. Right. We got these 80s going on. Nice. Yeah, yeah I love it. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I mean I my wife always talked about getting a doctorate. Mm -hmm. I never said that. I I mean, <laughs> I never said that uh <laughs> Why you say it like that? <laughs> hey, hey, you know, um, I I love knowledge, and my wife will tell you, I, I love to read, right? Um, that's why I get my book of the week and all that kind of stuff like mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. because I like reading stuff. You know, um, I don't like to go to school for it, but I, you know, I, you know, so it, it, it's a big difference, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and and you know when somebody's testing you on it and stuff yep. like that. I, I just love knowledge. But right? you know what, though? And it's great that you know that about yourself, because sometimes, you know, sticking with the whole narratives thing, sometimes we make it seem like the only way that, you know, the only measure of success is academic accolade. And that is untrue, right? There are many mm. people who are very smart, who have a lot to offer the world, and did not get formal education or got, you know, some form of ed education mm -hmm. didn't go further. The reality is if we keep measuring ourselves against the stick of academic accolades, then that makes us feel like, well, what if, what, if I don't have those things, does that mean that I'm not offering anything to the world? What I have is not worth it. And that's absolutely untrue because mm. who we are and our own awesomeness Whatever it is that we're bringing to the world is important, and we're all valuable for the existence of the rest of us, right? Mm. Everybody can't do the same. We can't all do the same thing and have the same things because that would be a boring life. It certainly would. And and just for a moment, I want to say that um, as you spoke about family, faith, and education, um, one of the things I wrote in my book, my first chapter in the book was about family. Mm. Right. And inside the book, I talk about I talk about the positive things, but I also talk about the dysfunction of mm -hmm, family. Mm -hmm. Right. And 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 the thing, the most powerful thing I, you know, I talk about is that they are my family. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And 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 I love and I love my family, mm -hmm. you know, in all our dysfunction. You know, what I'm so, <laughs> because as a little kid, man, I see some crazy stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and and I got some crazy uncles, aunts and stuff like that, man. I can't begin to tell you about. <laughs> but, uh, but I probably <laughs> know them. They probably was in my family, too. <laughs> <laughs> that but, same but we love them. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but we, we but we love them. So and and then I think your mom, when what year your mom graduated high school? 74, I believe. I think it was 74. Because we were in high school together. Because I graduated 76. Maybe 76. 76. 76. Sorry, I, graduated, 76. I, graduated, I graduated 76. 76, and, I think is when yeah, she graduated. Yeah, so she grew up in my time frame, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about the, you know, American gangster time, you know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, drugs, alcohol, everything was running rampant. You know, it was. I'm, I'm I'm living in a dysfunctional home, you know, in regards to, you know, alcohol and mm -hmm. cousins and drugs. And, you know, yeah, she said 75. Oh, 75, yeah. 75. Yeah. But hey, man, we grew up in a time, man. If you man, if you didn't have one thing for me, being single family home, eventually being in a single family home was that I had and I had the boys club. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. And and. I don't know about a whole lot of girl. It wasn't a, a girls club, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's a boys club where, you know, a lot of men were there and to kind of give us direction. I don't know a lot in terms of whether there was a girls club or not, or who was being our models at that time. But that mm -hmm. was an important piece for me, you know, yeah. uh, entering, entering where somebody can give me some guidance, you know, and, and I was scared enough to accept it. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that thing like that when they say that, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put my foot where the sun don't shine. You know, and my mom was like, "Okay, that's fine. You you take care of that." You know, because you mm -hmm. know I'm about to hurt him. I'm about to kill him myself. Yeah. So yeah, I know I know what time your mom grew up in. Mm -hmm. Man, we we all thought we were living the life. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, back then and everything was good, mm-hmm. you know, so, but, um, yeah. And of course I've, you know, I had the opportunity to see uh, your brother all the time and then his sons, you know, coming mm-hmm. through the boys club mm-hmm. when I was at the boys and girls club. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So that I just wanted to, you know, my giant yeah, nephews, those are some tall. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was boys. like, <laughs> well, your mom, well, you're tall. I am, but not as tall as they are. Yeah, but your mom, your your mom was, I mean, a, a good height. She was considered tall when y'all considered were considered tall. Up. Now right, everybody's yeah. making her look pretty short. Well, and, <laughs> and then my mom and my dad wasn't tall, mm-hmm. but my my brother, my my youngest brother and myself, my middle brothers around, you know, they're with my mom, but we grew past our grandparents and everybody. Mm-hmm. But but man, your nephews, man, they just went, they, they took um, off like rockets. Yeah. <laughs> and you would check the male woman, the male, you know, male man. Or so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But um, no, awesome. And, and um, you know, transitioning out of, you know, when you, you start transitioning out of education, you're getting your degree and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. most people always think about like, well, you know, who am I going to work for? Has it always been a goal of yours uh, to work for yourself, to mm-hmm. start your own? Because I think, you you know, you started, you got a couple of businesses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So talk about talk about what that mindset was when so many people are coming out working for somebody. Yeah, yeah. You know, and eventually down the road, you say, like, well, I'm going to work for me. And yeah. Yeah. So, you know. It's interesting. I've been a psychologist. This is now, um, I'm entering my 20th year as a psychologist. Um, it's been about, um, let's see, when did I get my doctorate? Uh, I guess it's been about 12 years since I got my doctorate. And I knew I would, you know, start a business, but I wasn't really necessarily like, oh, I don't want to work for anyone else. I really just wanted to do certain things that I wanted to do, right? I wanted to make my own way and work with the population that I want to work with and do the things that I want to do. So I decided um, about three years ago, I, you know, I had this, this job, I was working at a school and was in a leadership position. And what was happening, I had been there about four years and every year it was like more and more things getting tacked on. And I was like, you know what, if I stay here, I'm never going to open that private practice. Now, at the same time, my paternal grandmother passed away and my paternal grandmother was, um, I don't know. She was like queen of like, are you doing what you want to be doing? Why are you, I would visit her on a Friday (laughs) night and she, you know, she's like, why are you visiting the old lady on Friday night? Like (laughs) you should be out having fun with your friends. Like, you know, and and I'm like, what old lady? It's just you here. Like, you know, (laughs) you know, so, um, when she passed, it really like truly had me reevaluating my life and my life choices. And, I was, you know, dealing with some things at work that I just felt like, you know, it's not really worth this because I need to do, I want to be able to say, at least I tried, you know, to open that business. Let's see Mm -hmm. how that goes. And so I quit that job. Um, I eventually got another job because I needed another job while I was building the business, but I quit it not knowing what other job that would be. And I just started my, the first business, Grace, Growth and Greatness Psychological Services to offer um, therapy and, um, psychological assessment and things like that. And I, you know, I did that. And six months later, COVID happened. Mm. And so I was like, Oh, wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what, what's, what's going on here? You know? <laughs> what are we going to do now? <laughs> like, you know, and, um, eventually once, once I realized like, oh, we're going to be in COVID for a while, I started to offer, I started to take some classes and learn how to do telehealth and, you know, do everything virtually. And, um, you know, I offered that to the clients that I had and some of them took me up on it. Some of them were very uncomfortable because we live in close quarters in New York City and they were like, I cannot have private sessions in my apartment. Like, <laughs> that's just not going to happen. So I ended up losing some clients. Meanwhile, the rent is still due. I ain't stepped foot in that office. That rent still due, though. So that's right. um, yeah. I had to take out a personal loan 
to you know pay the rest of my lease up for the for the rent and um and then the tragedy and miracle of george floyd occurred mm. and people were calling out of the woodworks like i need to talk to someone like so many people called and i basically was booked from about may june of 2020 until now like now is the first time i just accepted three new clients i haven't accepted new clients since june of 2020. Mm -hmm. so it's been you know a great like kind of ride and then i um decided to quit my full-time job and just work part i'm now working part-time but because i did that i spoke with a lawyer who said i needed to separate my business because i was doing a lot of speaking and consulting and so I then developed the second business, uh, Kiba Speaks um, LLC. And so, thank you. I love that logo. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> that's the you know the boombox is an ode to the to the hood, right? Like, yes. <laughs> so, um, thanks, Doctor Sap. So, um, Man, you got a lot of doctors on here. Yeah, like listen, listen, my friends, right. we in a doctor crew. Listen, it's yeah, a okay. So up. tell Come me, doctor, stand up. Let them know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, thanks, cuz. Yeah. Nicole. Yeah. Awesome. So I decided to do um, Kiba speaks, and you know I've been really doing a lot of um, consulting and you know, consulting with schools and organizations and then doing workshops and trainings. And so that's what that business is for. And I've, I've just separated that from the um, psychology. Dr. Kaysun, li li listen, let him know in the building. Okay. <laughs> what does Dr. Kaysun do? She, she is a, oh, I'll, I'll let you tell him what you do, but um, <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm yeah. ready to brag oh, on my don't friend. Don't forget ready at, to brag. At, at, at the bottom of the screen, there's some information if you want to uh, know more about uh, Dr. Keeper. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, down at the bottom of the screen, check that out. Uh, so, check, out uh, check out our website. I like our website, both of them. Thank you. Yeah. So it's interesting because um, I now am at the point where I'm like, you know, I would like to, I now am thinking very differently about business and getting more into the entrepreneurial mindset of, you know, I'm now, I got a two year plan before I expand my business and I am no longer doing the therapy. Other people are doing the therapy. Um, oh, thanks Patrice. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we're gonna bring her on in a moment. Be, okay. Because I know um, she got some questions for you. Okay. Um, so I was, you know, now I'm thinking more about how do I actually because here's the reality. These people don't deserve me. Okay. Look, Diori didn't put her whole her whole business. Look at her <laughs> website. She got a good website too. It's cute. Um <laughs> Um, but you know, these folks don't deserve me. And I'm realizing, you know, 20 years in, you know, how, like, as you get older, right. You know, you, you know, they say like, oh, when you get over 40, you just, <laughs> you know, you'd be like, I don't care. I'm like, I felt like that since I was about 13, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but after 20 years in this game, I'm like, you know what, let me, let me tell y'all something. I, I can show you better than I can tell you. And, you know, I'm only, only doing the things that I want to do and that I can bring value to. And my existence at this point is about, um, oh, thanks, Deoria. Um, my existence at this point is about what legacy I'm leaving, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm really thinking about like, okay, so what am I doing with my life? Like, yes, I have all of these letters after my name, but what does it all mean? How, how have I impacted the people? What am I doing for the community? You know, um, my brother and I are going to be working on getting uh, his basketball team together so I can be a sponsor for that. Um, you know, just really trying to find ways that I can help the community. You know, obviously I do that through my work with helping clients. I work mostly with black and brown uh, youth and adults in my own personal time. I work with others during the day. Um, and, you know, just really trying to think about, like, how do I help? And so for me, I've stepped away from a lot of things, like a lot of the stupid arguments people have at work. I'm like, I don't even, 
what do you, how can I be helpful? If I can't be helpful, <laughs> let me mind my business, right? Like, because right. I, I don't got time for this. Also, the moment you feel like I'm not helpful, let's go ahead and make that grown decision and move and part ways, right? Yeah. So that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I was uh, 27 years as between the executive director and the executive director of development for the Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon. And um, I recently, well, it's a, just around the pandemic, time of the pandemic, mm -hmm. where I, I retired and, you know, I had to learn a little bit over last year, um, you know, about entrepreneurship. Mm hmm. Um, and, you know, cause I wanted to get out and speak and consult about youth development mm -hmm. and, and I have, you know, you know, experience in, in terms of this whole sports world. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then I wrote the book. Uh, so yeah, trying to make that awesome. transition where I want to be more impactful to people, you mm -hmm. know, I want to, you know, be able to do it your way, you know, and you have a lot to offer. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just trying to figure it out right now. And you have a podcast. Let's not forget that. And I have a podcast. Yeah. Okay. You know, I love the podcast because it came at the time. It was part of my my uh, my vision plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, what 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 was I going to do when I left the Boys and Girls Club? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And and, you know, at the bottom of it, at the very bottom of the 19 or 20 things that I was thinking about doing was the podcast. So everything mm -hmm. else you had to be in person, you had to be there. And mm -hmm. I looked down at the bottom. Only thing you could do in this pandemic is that right there. Right. What right. is that? <laughs> right. So, yeah. you know, so that was awesome. So, mm -hmm. um, that was, uh, you know, so to be able to do it over these now in my third season, mm -hmm. right now is just trying to figure out how do you grow it? How do you yeah. develop it? Yeah. yeah. And how do you take it to the next level? You know, right. and, and and I I continue to do. I love communications because that's mm -hmm. I graduated in communications, mm -hmm. and you know I love I love hearing pe people's story, right? And I right. and I believe that you know what you shared tonight, um, you know whoever's listening is going to be impacted by it. Absolutely. You know, and they're going to pause and say, "Hey, third and third. Third and third. You know, there's a lot of people who got a third. It may not be in Mount Vernon, but there's a third and third yep. everywhere. Right. What is and it? What is it now? Dr. Mark, <laughs> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> you know, all, yeah. the, all the boulevards that are called Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We already know. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, they're all over this nation. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all over this world and people rise up out of them every single day. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know, it's also the people who stay in them forget and or are unaware that even though the circumstance is that they are they may feel stuck in terms of their living situation mm -hmm. there's always room to rise spiritually educationally to show up in a way that only they can show up right so it doesn't matter if you find yourself still in those situations. Don't measure yourself only by that, right? Measure yourself. And you know, by the way, I left third and third because my grandmother was sick um, she, and I ended up moving with my dad to the Bronx. And um, so I left because of that. But the, cha the challenge is, a lot of it is, you know, you see, and no, for those who grew up with me, you know, they knew my family situation. They, you know, they understood what was going on. And there are some who, you know, can't really accept the joy of my life at this point because of that mindset, right? But that's because somebody told them what it means, you know, what you have to have as a background in order to be considered somebody, right? Mm, I right. am somebody I am amazing. I am awesome. And you are blessed to be around me. And that's what we all should believe about ourselves because we all have something to offer to this existence that no one else can offer. Yeah. And, and what, what do you think about um, when you talk, when you, when you think about you, because you had mentioned earlier, you know, and uh, you know, when you're dealing with, uh, psychology and you know all the things that deal with the mind because mm -hmm. we, we're in this time of of the mind mm -hmm. i mean i don't know if you heard me say in the very beginning man you know our thinking 
Mm-hmm. You know, and and talk a little bit about because the, you know the the thing today is all about uh, you know mental uh, problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's all we hear. Things that happen in our in our, in our mind. You know, you you talking about the uh, social injustice, mm-hmm. you know, George Floyd, all mm-hmm. those things, man. Things that kind of impact us, and then plus throwing the pandemic in on it. As well, man, it challenges what we were thinking. So talk about the importance of how our mind works. Yes, definitely. You know, and how do we, you know, how how do we get to this point? How do we get point to help our minds grow? Mm -hmm. Well, so I wrote down your um, affirmation. Manifestation is real. Change the way you think. Change the way you speak. Uh, Very true. Uh, if we can change the way we think, then we can change the way we live, actually. Our mind is always the battlefield. Always. The battle is in our mind. And so during this pandemic, the challenge there have been so many challenges because I'm about to say some things. Let me just tell y'all, get ready, right? Because y'all going to feel <laughs> away. Okay? You're going to feel away. But just remember, I'm telling you in love. Right. And I can't see you. So let's just remember that. I can't see you. So you can have all the reaction you want. Okay. All right. So if we, the thing is we, we sat during the pandemic and we realized we don't like ourselves. We've never had to forcefully stay with ourselves and learn who we are. And as we started to learn who we are, we were like, oh, no, I want to go ahead and distract myself, which is what we usually do with all the going out with the friends and, you know, doing all the things and pretending to be oh so busy. Right. Because we are avoiding the reality of who we are. Sometimes we're avoiding the reality of what our relationship is. Right. This is why there was so much divorce, so many breakups, so much happening during the pandemic, when you realize like, I don't even like that dude. I, I Who is that? <laughs> right? Like, that is not the person I thought I married. Right. And it's because you've been distracting yourself with other things that you didn't even really get to know the person that you called your spouse. Right. So the challenge is we think that we're supposed to be perpetually entertained. That's what we think life is. Mm. And so for people like me right now, for instance, I'm not dating. Right. If there are any eligible bachelors out there, I'm just saying, you know, um, <laughs> tall, dark, handsome, you know. All if, right. If, if Lowe's gives you the the good to go, I'll, I'll consider. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, um, yeah. you know, I'm not dating right now, and it's interesting because there are some people in my life who really struggle with that. They they struggle with why aren't you trying to date? Why aren't you trying to be out here? Why aren't you? And I'm like. I, I've tried and these folks ain't on my level. Right. And again, let me be clear. That has nothing to do with education. Right. My level is I'm trying to be my best every day. I'm trying to do my like live my purpose every single day. That's what I'm doing on this earth. And if you're not about that life, don't come over here. I don't have time to be distracted with foolishness. Because at the end of the day, I want to be known for how I made an impact on the world, not whether or not you thought I was cute. Mm. I'm already cute. I look at myself every day in the mirror. I see it. <laughs> I like that. You know, like, <laughs> I see it. It may be five <laughs> or 10 pounds heavier, but it's still cute. Right? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, you know, it's it's interesting because we we allow these narratives of what we think we're supposed to be doing. You know, I'm in my 40s. I'm not married. I don't have children. And people think I'm supposed to be really sad and depressed about that, but not mm. realizing. But what am I doing? I'm out here living my life and making a difference. Also traveling the world. Right. You know why I can travel the world? Because I ain't got no kids and no man. Right. If I decide I want to go one year, I think for my 40th birthday, I was like, oh, I I booked myself a a trip to Ghana in December of that year. My birthday is in August. Two, three weeks before my birthday, I was like, nah, I want to go somewhere during my birthday. I called a travel agent. I said, find me somewhere to be on my birthday. And I was out. Right. You can't do that when you got spouse, children. Right. So this hello, the the joy of that freedom. (laughs) 
Like, I'm not even going to pretend like I'm feeling a ways. I'm That joy is unmatched. You know, my brother called me once. I forgot where I was. Maybe I was in Seattle. He said, yo, every time I call you, you somewhere else. I was like, that's that no kid life. Get on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if I allow people's other people's narrative, then I may be sitting here saying like, oh, what's wrong with me? Why am I, why aren't I dating? And oh, I'm so old. What if I can't have kids? What if I don't ever get married and I'll be an old lady? Even if I'm an old lady, I'm never going to be a cat lady. And I'll be blessed to be an old lady. Okay. I'm allergic yeah, to that. That's what I'm talking about. It. But, you know, it's like we have to really think about what is it, the story that we're telling ourselves and the story that we're accepting from others. If mm. you don't remember anything else I say, please remember that you create your own narrative. You get to tell the world who you are. Right. You don't let other people's narrative define you because they're only saying what they have seen and they haven't seen it all, right? So mm. I, all my life I've heard, you can't do that. You can't do that. You won't, it won't work out for you. <laughs> Nobody does it that way. And here mm. I stand doing all the things, right? I've been told repeatedly throughout my life in high school, college, graduate school, even when I got my doctorate, you can't do that. And what did mm. I do? Whatever it was, it was done, right? And I, <laughs> I continue like to do it, right? I continue to do it because I don't let other people define me. I do it because this is what I want to do. And this is my purpose on this earth. And only I can fulfill it. Mm. If I stay in my lane and I understand who I am and what I have to offer, that I'm not so bothered by what other people are doing. This is why I can have so many doctors and my friend list, right? Because mm. their light doesn't dim mine. We shine bright together. That's right. You know? So yeah. when we're thinking about mindset, really think about what is the story that you're telling yourself? For those of you who grew up in, you know, interesting, traumatic, difficult, tra um, drama-filled circumstances, think about moments in your life that in that childhood, that upbringing, that didn't have that. What made those times great? Mm. Also think about how you survived those times. Because something we don't share and we don't really give a lot of thought to is we, we, we label all the things that we've been through as a person. And we then say, oh, and because of that, I am. No, you're awesome and, and wonderfully and beautifully made. And you went through some things. And the key word there, my mom says this all the time, you went through, right? You're not stuck there. If you're stuck there, you're leaving yourself there. Get unstuck. Decide mm. today that you can make a difference. If you're in a situation today where you are not doing the thing that you know you are purposed on this earth to be doing, all you have to do is take a step and say, you know what? What can I do to do one thing closer closer to living out my purpose. Hmm. Yeah, I like I like I like all that. You know? <laughs> and it, no, no, because uh, you people hear me say all the time on the show, you know, my grandfather, uh, you know, he's an avid baseball player. Right. So I'm, I'm sitting in the living room with him. He said, come over here, boy. I got a nugget for you. Right. <laughs> now I'm thinking like, man, <laughs> he going to give me a nugget. You know, I was like, what? He got, he got a, a nugget. And then he started talking to me. Right. It was mm -hmm. something I didn't want to hear. Right. And so you were just dropping it right there. You were dropping mm -hmm. dimes and nuggets, and, <laughs> you know, and I hope people are listening. And remember that, you know, this stays on the, the, the blueprint stays on YouTube. It stays mm -hmm. on 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 Facebook. So you get the you know, you get to listen to it over and over and over again in case you miss something. Right. Because we we always miss we always miss things. Oh, thanks, you know? Alexis. So, um, yeah, you give some shout outs. I like <laughs> I love it. You know, there's some great shout outs. I, you know, I know my wife is over here, but I know her mind is running. Right. And, um, you know, I want to pop on. She's like, oh, you should have had somebody pop. on. I'm going to have her pop on. OK, <laughs> because, because because I think. You know, she's been listening, you know, and she's been telling me, ah, oh, she's, so, you know, she's one like, you got to get Dr. Kiva on because she's great. She's amazing. You know? <laughs> so, I'm like, who's Dr. Kiva? I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know so uh, I'm going to pop her on 
and I know she has some comments or, or, or maybe some questions for you. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So just want to hear. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello. 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 <laughs> Everything that Lil said is accurate. Um, like I said on my my post, the moment I met you, we sat down at the table at my god brother, your cousin's memorial service, and I was in awe of our oh. conversation. I was in awe of just hearing you. You have a, a hypnotizing way about your presentation, and I just that's really Jesus. Wanted, I want to commend you. I want to commend you for that. You know, and it definitely you. is. It is all about who he is. Um, and you said something that really um, was powerful for me. You said that when you're in the presence of your friends who are doctors, that you don't have to dim your light, mm -hmm. but that together you shine brighter. Absolutely. Brighter, actually. Mm -hmm. And so as I began to see the uh, responses from Dr. Kaysan and uh, Dr. Sapp and all those that are coming in, you know, it just speaks okay in volumes mm -hmm. uh, about who you are. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, I you. remember once when my daughter was in, I think, high school, the girls were bothering her. And she said, Mommy, they say that I think I'm all that in a bag of chips. You remember that phrase? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, but you are that part and <laughs> and i said and so are they i said the next time somebody tells you that you think you're all that in a bag of chips tell them i am and then when they get ready to lose it you say and so are you <laughs> because it'll change the whole experience. And, and I think sometimes a lot of people that are involved in bullying and certain um, behaviors are so negative about their own selves Absolutely. that they push that on other people. And when you give them a positive affirmation, sometimes they don't even know how to receive that. Absolutely. But with your authentic, 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 authenticity, authenticity, no, authentic self, Mm -hmm. with your authentic self, how do you bring that into the young people? Because mm -hmm. this is really, you work in elementary school, but how do you teach young people to be authentic when everything they do, especially with social media, has a fakeness around it? Yeah. So that's a great question because what I try to tell people, not just the kids, but the adults that I work with too, is that we have to find authenticity and authenticity is not, Hey, that's it. It's all of me. I'm here all the time. Right. Authenticity is, are there situations that I need to like, you know, how much of myself can I bring into these situations? How can I make sure that I'm not feeling like I'm sacrificing myself while I'm in these situations? And so what I tell children is I remind them of who they are. Right. And so whatever I know about them, and then coupled with whatever they didn't tell me about themselves, I say to them, if you know those things to be true, why are you then saying that you're not this and you're not that and you're not this, right? Let's call it what it really is. And it's what maybe you don't get as many likes on, you know, social media, maybe you don't have as many followers. But that doesn't mean that you are less than that means that in that particular environment, it's not going the way that you want it to go because that's not an environment that breeds authenticity. You're not going to be the star of that as long as you remain authentic. The moment that you succumb to the pressure of that, you're going to get many more likes and followers. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you want to do, then you are basically saying you don't want to show up as yourself. You want what's popular. Well, you know, it's living in a time and I've mm. brought up the children Mm -hmm. But a lot of times the adults, adults. Mm -hmm. are not authentic. Listen, and so the children are learning that again. what they live <laughs> and what they see and what they experience. So you got fake adults and then the kids are trying to live a, a life when they're looking at these adults and saying, yep. well, they're not real either. 
Right. And the challenge is, though, you know, when you so for me, I it's a lonely place. Let me just be honest. It's a lonely place when you choose to be your authentic self most of the time. Right. And the reason mm -hmm. is the challenge for people when I show up in a space as myself, there is so much anger. Right. <laughs> Even if the person has never met me, there can be so much anger. And you know why? Because I'm free. And people want to know, why in the world do you get to be free? Who told you you could be free? And I try to help people release themselves. You could be free too. It's not just me. I wasn't the only person on the planet that was told I should be myself. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> right. the, the reality is there's a challenge with folks of, you know, wanting permission because we understand that we, we are in a community, we work for folks who have expectations around certain things. And we are now like, well, I have to do this. I have to, that language. I have to do this because that's what these folks expect. Do you have to? Yeah. Or do you do that mm -hmm. because you're avoiding the conflict of what would happen if you didn't do it? So we're living this running. world of, we wanna avoid conflict. And so we're choosing not to be ourselves so that we don't get into conflict. And now we're in internal conflict because of it. Absolutely. The, the one thing that I think when you and I met that I had made as my 2022 resolution that I wanted to be unapologetically, authentically me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of those type people that if we have a relationship or we have a friendship and you need something and I have the ability to do it, I'm going hard for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so sometimes I might do more than I need to do in my time frame. But if it's going to, um, it makes me happy sometimes to see that I can provide that, that need. Right. But there are some times that I need to say no. Absolutely. Hmm. And I've had a real hard time with that mm -hmm. because in my process, I've always figured if that was a need you had, because I would always want to provide that. Mm -hmm. So learning no was a, has been a very hard thing um, for me. So mm -hmm. I want to be able to say no and not apologize right. for saying no, because no is a healthy move for me. Absolutely. And you, uh, here you go. Go ahead and do that. There's your permission. <laughs> um, <laughs> so well, when, when, his, when our son gets home, when he moved back here, he's going to teach her how to say no. Mm -hmm. well, the, <laughs> he the already said that. The challenge <laughs> is, you know, it, the reason why it's about the reason why you're not saying no. Right. And you're not saying no because of your history of doing all of these things all of this time. Right. And here's the reality. And listen closely. We are not bound to who we were. We are only bound to who we are. And if who I am right now is different than who I was yesterday, then people either accept that or they move away from me. Mm. Mm. That's the reality. Because why? Because I am the narrator of my story. Mm. Right. And me right. telling you no doesn't make me any less helpful. No, that's true. I, and I think something you said a few minutes ago, you said that sometimes because when you're in your authentic self, some people get angry. Mm -hmm. I think the people who are not authentic be, are angry with your authenticity. Oh, because 100%. They, they are often um, intimidated by it. And it was the one thing for me that drew me to you. Mm -hmm. because the one thing I learned was I was not going to allow my light to dim and I loved seeing your light shining. That's, so I'm yeah. a person that pushes somebody else's shine, but it doesn't cause me to push me back. Mm -hmm. it, it, when we went to Aunt Evelyn's um, 80th birthday, mm -hmm. right? And there was a period where she asked people to get up mm -hmm. and talk mm -hmm. about who they were and what they did. Mm -hmm. And some people might have thought, thought one way or the other, but I was so blown away by the level of power and greatness that was in that room. Somebody mm -hmm. else might have been offended by it, 
Mm-hmm. But I loved it. It was mm-hmm. a great moment. And I think we, as Black, Brown people, we need to think about and realize how much power is really mm-hmm. around us and to push us and not be intimidated by one another, but to be proud of each other. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. but, but we have to understand what the truth is about who we are. Right. So I started by saying my mother is a warrior. Right. And I, be, I believe that to be true. Here's here's the reality. We are all if if you are black in this country and your people were from this country or brought to this country. There is nothing but awe that you can feel knowing that for centuries they have tried to take us out. Not diminish and humiliate only, but kill. There has been a movement to kill us, right? This is what enslaved people went through. I was in Ghana a few years ago. I'll be back this December. And that first time when I went, I stood where the slave ships were and in the dungeons um, where the enslaved folks were kept with the, the still the remnants of the excrement on the floors, right? And I was like, I'm a ama- like, are you kidding me? I stand here today. These are my ancestors. And I'm here today mm. on a trip and I get to go home mm. from here. Wow. Mm. On a first cat on a um, business class flight. Okay? So this is the reality. We if we did a better job of understanding our history in this country, I you know, this is why we can't, right? Because people would be like, "Hey, you know what? I'm great. I don't know why you're trying to make me feel like I'm not because hey, our our ancestors built this place. Hmm. All of the things. All of the things were us. Right. For no money. I mean, come on. How do you not how can you not be proud and also recognize that's in your bloodline Mm. that is in your bloodline so for those of us who have Mm -hmm. difficult family stories right for and the more immediate when you have difficult family stories along with those those accolades right so our our family talked about those accolades and there are some family members that those accolades are not the case right but you know what the accolade is they were still there they were still able to be in that room they were still able Mm. to move forward from whatever circumstance had them down before. And that's the reality is like, if we, if we can just recognize that whatever it is that we're going through or whatever it is that we've been through, we have an opportunity to move forward in a more powerful way. You know why? Cause we say so period. Mm. That's it. We don't need other people's permission. So when people are, you know, talking to me and they're, oh, somebody asked me years ago, how are you so confident? I said, because I'm the only me on this earth. Amen. <laughs> I'm the only me. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I don't think my wife. Hey, well, you know, when I see when <laughs> that's my when that's I, my NFT. I'm going to Ghana to, to to talk about my NFT. Okay, well, I, you know, when I thought of it, I, I found that picture. I was like, oh, you know what? Man, that's like uh, back in the day, Foxy Brown, Pam Greer going on. Listen, you know, that's me with my Dr. afro. Dr. Kiba Listen. show. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I purchased Kiba that show. NFT. I purchased that <laughs> NFT and I, you know, I happened to get that one. I said, that looks like me, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, we and back in the day. That's Dr. Vicky. That's that Dr. Was... Vicky Sapp there next to me and uh, the yellow there. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. You got the crew. Uh, yeah, but I, I mean, I think for for me tonight, this was very in, um, enlightening. Uh, yes. You know, tonight um, because we have to speak more real about, you know, and we have to speak more real to ourselves. Absolutely. You know, and and I love it that you, that you guys, um, all the doctors and stuff like that, are together and you know moving in because we need more of that. You know, we we Absolutely. we need more of that kind of power. Uh, that and 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 not just the power, but the freedom. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I'm, my wife will tell you, I'm, I'm really all, all the time my authentic self. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's <laughs> you know, good because you're the yeah. only you. You're the only one that can be you. Yeah, and I so said things in, in, 
in boardrooms and, and and things like that. It's like, well, who do you think he is? You know, like, <laughs> come on, that I'm me. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, this was great tonight. I want you know, I want to thank you for uh, for sharing tonight. I want to thank you for taking time out your busy schedule, man. This is this this was great. Um, thank you, I appreciate I, I it. Thank enjoy, you so much for having it, yeah. me. Oh, oh, it was my pleasure. You know, uh, my wife was, spoke so highly of you, and then we met. You know, at the 80th birthday party, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, it's yeah, some skills in his in the house. <laughs> you know, no, and you were strong too. You know, definitely, uh, you know, strong. They go on Evelyn right there, and and Elder Ingram, 80 years old. Yeah, you were strong. I love to see strong people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and then how the how the young people look at you. Yeah. You know, when you're going on to be successful, this was one of my curiosity questions. So, you know, uh, was the therapy for black girls. Mm-hmm, if you mm-hmm. can come, if you can come on it, comment on that before we go. Yeah. So that's, um, I'm just a member. I'm a member. That's uh Dr. Joy. Um, I'm blanking on her, her, her last name. Dr. Joy is a, is a psychologist in Atlanta. She created that list for, um, therapy for black girls and women to find black therapists in their town, in their city, and their state. And um, during the pandemic, that list has grown exponentially. So mm-hmm. if you're looking for therapy, um, you know, you can definitely go there. If you're looking for therapy for me, let me just be clear. I don't take insurance of any kind and I cannot see any family members. So don't be like, I'm your second, third, fourth cousin. You can see me. I can't. Okay. I can't. <laughs> well, we're clear on we're clear on that. <laughs> but I can come speak to your organization. So check out my website. Get 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 me some money. That's what y'all need to be doing. Okay. Yeah, I'll help yeah. you find a therapist. You get me some money. Give me the Michael <laughs> Thank you, Epps cousin Audrey. Give me Michael Epps said, get 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 the Thank money, you, man. Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money. Yeah, support. I mean, invest and Dr. support. Dr. Joy Bradford, thank you, Dr. Kaysen. Dr. Joy Bradford is the is Dr. the Joy psychologist Bradford. in uh, Atlanta. Hey, Andy, look at all my people <laughs> that showed up. Yeah, I thank you for showing up, man. I, I appreciate each and every one look of you. Cousin Evelyn, she she about to cry. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> so again. Um, <laughs> Yes, all about the Benjamins. All about baby. the Benjamins. <laughs> hey, you got to get that powerful group together and say, "How can we make some money? Show me the listen, money." Listen, <laughs> we all we all doing it. Hey, yeah, and you ought to have a conference. I mean, you ought to for this. Listen, online. get out of my head. I'm trying to I'm trying to think about a conference actually. With, yeah, um, whether, whether it's online or in person. Thanks, Liv. Yeah. We got Olivia, who's a powerhouse in the finances. She's getting everybody right. With wow. the uh, with uh, how to be debt free, oh. <laughs> Every, everybody doing something. Everybody, I sent I sent this I sent this link out to so many people. Listen, let's write. Well, I say appreciate less. it. Yeah, yeah, and it's been great. <laughs> he said, "Show me the money, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Phil over there." So uh, again, Doctor Kiva, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so and, much. And uh, of course, I appreciate your family too as well. And Thank I know you, your everyone, brother. I, I know I'm had to. I know I'm had to text your brother back. <laughs> he might. He might text me a hundred times. <laughs> but uh, uh, thanks. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate so, you too. And thanks, yeah. Patrice. You're welcome, love. And uh, you know, for everybody that supports the Blueprint Podcast each and every week, I want to say thank you, man. This is this was awesome tonight. You guys have been awesome, man. I hope you enjoyed your summer and your last. Well, it's not your last holiday, but the last holiday before the summer, man. I know we're all excited. Our kids are go, our kids and grandkids are going back to school, right? Um, and and I'll say this uh, finally, uh, you know, as I say each and every week, man, make sure that every day you wake up, you make it your masterpiece, right? I love you guys. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you next week. I got all these yeah, comments coming I, on. I saw my little brother, my little yeah. brother Mo. He, that's my big sister. <laughs> yeah. There you oh. go. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, keep on shouting out. I, we can put him up there. 
Yeah, I had Nicole on. Yes. Yeah, that was good too. It was good seeing Nicole. Uh, uh, was it last week or the week before last? It was good seeing Nicole. I hadn't seen Nicole in person. Oh, you know, I just seen her on the show. I was like, oh, okay. And we jumped on there. Did a great job. Yeah, that's family awesome. Got some power in it. Huh? Some power in that family. Yeah, yeah, got the power family. Listen, we try. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta close out. All right, well, we're closing out now. Again, God bless you. Good. Good. Say God bless you. Who's next week? Next week. We got Coach Mo next week. Munch. Coach Munch. Coach Munch. Mo Munch. Munch Mo Munch. We got Coach Munch next week. We're going to talk about the W the WABA, right? Trying to build this uh women's professional basketball team. My wife is a is the owner of one of the teams. They'll be playing in the championship in Greensboro, North Carolina, the final four. Right. And uh, Marsha Blunt, Mom Vernon's own Marsha Blunt, the president, the president, president of the WABA, former player at Mom Vernon High School, man, star at Queens College, had mad skills back in the day. Yeah. So also, nice. from, the also from the projects, mm-hmm. 230, 240, one of them over there. <laughs> so <laughs> again, God bless you guys. Love you. And I look forward to seeing you next week. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's More and on Facebook at Lowe's More Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. With the kitchen, it's a joke. I ain't buying it like I'm broke. Insufficient funds for insignificant talk.